Welcome in. I'm Laura Bassett, and this is the Landscape Design News for June 10th, 2024. We are located here in the beautiful Sonoma County of California, and we are going to cover a couple of interesting topics this week. We are leading into Father's Day weekend, so we will be touching on some amazing outdoor locations to take your family or sneak away yourself and do a little bit of fishing here in Sonoma County. We're going to talk nationally about the protein problem, how one rancher is finding some solutions to uh, making a positive impact on the environment with cattle ranching. And then we're going to wrap up along the same theme, going over some of the most requested nature-based solutions by landscape architects and landscape designers uh, as from the survey by the American Association of Landscape Architects. So let's dive in. Happy Father's Day, everyone. Uh, hopefully you get to celebrate the father figure in your life this weekend and or just if you're a dad yourself, get to go out and spend this weekend doing what you love. So there's many, many wonderful events here in Sonoma County. I would point you towards the Sonoma County Tourism, even if you're a local. They have all the wonderful events going on this weekend. Uh, but I wanted to focus specifically on some outdoor activities, as I am a landscape designer here. So let's talk about some great places that you can fish, swim, and enjoy nature this weekend. Uh, the top three I would recommend is the Healdsburg Veterans Memorial Beach, Steelhead Beach, and the town of Jenner. There's a wonderful list in our show notes, which will be linked down below. Uh, you can go see all of the various different places and specific sort of descriptions of them if you've never been. Uh, but these three sort of are very, very different, but encapsulate a lot of wonderful locations to go and spend time. Uh, one of my first memories of fishing, I caught my first fish here in the Russian River. I was camping with my mom and uh, <laughs> we both didn't quite know what to do. I, I don't know that she had been fishing in decades, and uh, but we, we did manage to catch and release it. And then, of course, I caught lots of sticks and other fun detritus in the river. But um, that, that was my first experience of fishing was here in the Russian River. And then I, uh, I was lucky enough to live up in the San Juan Islands of Washington State. So I got to do some salmon fishing later in life up there. But uh, anyway, so hopefully if you do go to any of these beaches, let me know. Or if you have your own favorite local spot, definitely share that below. Let's move over into the national stage. So it's summer. We're doing a lot of grilling. Uh, if you're like me, you probably enjoy a good steak. But as we all know, um, ranching and the ranching industry does lead to a lot of CO2 going into the atmosphere, at least in the way that modern ranching is done right now. There are many, many people who are doing amazing work to make a more resilient, more positive impact on the environment with their ranching. We'll probably bring up Joel Salatin and his dirt farming at some point on this podcast. But for now, let's talk about the protein problem. So the rancher Meredith Ellis is working on a way to transform cattle ranching into a net positive for the planet. Uh, definitely go read this article. There's some beautiful photographs and video of her ranch um, and what she's doing to sort of scientifically go after the impact of ranching, moving from pasture to pasture in a way that's both healthy for her herd and healthy for the environment. So that's a really wonderful article to go read. 
Now, <laughs> let's get into sort of the nerdy side of landscape design. So the American Association for Landscape Architects has done two national surveys at this point on what demands clients have, what are clients asking for when they are hiring landscape architects and landscape designers. And this year, over 70% of landscape architects and designers said that they've experienced an increase in client demand for nature-based solutions for climate change. So that's really interesting in that a lot of people are asking for solutions for climate change to come through us, landscape designers and landscape architects. And um, from personal experience, I agree. A lot of clients ask me, number one, pretty much across the board is low water. Uh, everybody around here, especially in Northern California, is very sensitive to how much water we're using. So low water is always really important. Low maintenance, I think, is the second most asked for attribute. Not technically, uh, you know, connected to climate change. However, the more maintenance you're having to do, the more, um, you know, man hours and equipment you're having to use. So the lower maintenance, the lower impact in a way you're having. And then of course, really important around here is fire resilient, fire wise, uh, landscaping. And then the, the number four thing that everybody always asks for, uh, is, you know, how, how do I create wildlife habitat? How do I um, create an area for pollinators? So this reflects very similarly to what the ASLA survey found. Uh, the top three concerns across the nation for uh, landscape architects clients is an increased intensity of storms and fires. So people are very aware of the change in the climate, how that affects them locally. Uh, the increased duration and intensity of heat waves. This, this comes at a, a perfect time for this because right now we are having one of the earlier heat waves that, um, at least since I've been back in Sonoma County, this is this is hot right now. So everybody's thinking about that. And then the loss of pollinators such as bees and bats. Now, we are seeing a overall net positive in the honeybee population um, nationally. However, a lot of local pollinators and local species are starting to go uh, extinct or they're they're threatened. So to some extent, we have to still be thinking about our local pollinators, our diversity of pollinators, so that we really have a resilient system of different pollinators in our areas. And as mentioned, bats are one of them. So that's a really interesting sort of takeaway from the, the um, ASLA survey. I would definitely suggest going and reading more into it if that interests you. Overall, uh, in landscape architecture, we are mindful of our impact on local and global environments. So as an industry, we're already sort of geared towards thinking about nature-based solutions for climate change, thinking about how we can solve just everyday challenges in your life with natural elements. Um, so whether it's, you know, making your landscape a bit more resilient to climate change, uh, providing habitat for wildlife, or just proactively protecting your home during wildfire season, we're here to help. Please do not hesitate to reach out, ask questions. Uh, that's what I'm here for. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for spending your time with me today. I look forward to talking to you next week. We're going to dive into the world of lavender. June in Sonoma County is Lavender Month. And uh, we're going to dive into the history, some local spots that you can go check out some of this beautiful, beautiful flower here in the area. So I will see you next week. And until then, have a wonderful, wonderful time out in your garden. Signing off, Laura Bassett.